Hey yo, it's BPM and welcome to It's Complicated. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Seiko Baby Tuna. Here we go. Seiko Baby Tuna. It's a uh, it's part of their Prospect series, Seiko Prospect series, and brand new. This will run you a little over 500 US dollars. Um, used, you can pick it up for 300 ish if you're lucky. I've seen it for a little over 300, and it's really not a bad price for 300 bucks. It is a 47 and a half millimeter uh, this way, including the crown from crown to here, um, about 13 millimeters thick on the case, so it's a bit chunky, it's a bit thick, um, and the lug width is 22 millimeters. The full-size tuna is the same size, the lugs are a little wider, uh, they're 24 millimeters, and the full size is also a quartz movement, so if that's something you're considering, um, it's an extra 100 meters water resistance, the regular tuna, and you know you're paying over a thousand US dollars for it uh, for a quartz movement and that is not something I would do I will talk about that in another video um, this is a heavy watch especially with this bracelet on uh, all these links are solid steel and this is a very very fucking heavy watch this uses the Seiko 4R36 movement it's an automatic and it features the day and the date which I fucking really like um, I've had a date on pretty much every watch I've owned and if someone asks me, you know, what day it is, that's the first thing I do is look at the watch and, um, it's always nice to have that extra day of the week as well. Um, it's automatic movement. Um, the movement can be stopped if you unscrew the crown and pull it out all the way. It stops the movement. You don't have to figure out a way to do it. It just does that as it's designed to. It has a 40 hour power reserve. And it's about 21,600 beats per hour. So I wouldn't call it a high beat movement. You can see there if you're really looking. You can see it kind of ticking away there. Um, as far as timekeeping goes, uh, I've had this three days. Check the time on it three different times. First day it was negative 2.2. The second day it was plus 11.5. And the third day it was... Um, minus 44 seconds so not really sure what's going on there you would think that for that kind of price you would get a little better timekeeping but hey um to be fair the last day i did not wear it and uh, it was just kind of sitting in this position about like this so i found the best time it keeps it sitting like this and that's kind of how it would be on your wrist um, obviously there's no torbillion fucking complication here uh, the crystal is the Seiko Hardlex. That's their like proprietary crystal. Um, it is supposed to be a simulated sapphire glass, which is extremely resistant to knocks and scratches. However, it's going to be really hard to get on this one. But the guy who let me borrow this, um, he said it's already got a couple nicks in it, and it does. Um, you can actually send these away to get a sapphire crystal for about 50 bucks if you so desire. It's not super reflective, which is cool. Um, Pretty cool. I think Seiko should just fucking get over it and use Sapphire Glass and raise all their prices a little bit. That's what they have to do. Um, I think a lot of people would appreciate that, especially Seiko fans. These people that are buying this watch and having it sent to get an aftermarket crystal. I don't know. You know what I mean? Not really my thing. Um, back to the case here. It's super chunky. Has these three screws, one, two, and the third one there. Um, just a, a thick, thick fucking case. Um, it's a holes case, so it's pretty easy to remove the bracelet. You just, you could even use a fucking uh, paper clip. You don't need a watch repair kit or anything. Um, it's a lightly brushed steel. It's not polished, which is nice. I mean, I think, uh, having parts of a case polished is good, but the whole thing polished would just be a fucking mess. Um, but there is no polish bits on this. Well, no, it's all pretty much brushed here on the fucking uh bezel there there's a little bit of polishing there but that's really about it everything else is straight brushed 
Um, it's a 200 meter water resistance, so 600 feet, uh, again, versus the, the regular tuna, which is 300 meters. But again, it's a quartz movement and you know we're gonna get to that eventually. Um, crown does not have any logo on it to speak of, just plain crown there. Um, it's, a, it's a good texture, it's easy to unscrew, but I will say that it's a little nasty to screw it back in. It just feels rough, um, but it, it also feels sturdy as well as it feels rough. Now, the dial, the dial has, it, it's a pretty clean looking dial, although the markers are pretty big. Um, it does have the minutes under the markers, which is, you know, it's a nice touch, 12, uh, nine, six, and three, nothing really there. Obviously three has the day and the date. Um, they are raised. Those markers, they're not raised a lot, but they are slightly raised, which is, you know, a nice touch and to be expected uh, for this price point, I believe. Um, has the Seiko Prospects X logo uh, at the six o'clock there, a nice big Seiko at 12. And I love the second hand on this watch. It's black and it has the white and the, the little bit of gray there. Um, just a very nice touch there. Kind of all the colors of the bezel or all the colors of the dial, excuse me, on the second hand. Um, the hour and the minute hands kind of match the markers because they are nice and thick. Uh, and it, it does fit a watch of this size. I think if they were thin, it would look a little silly with something this bulky. Um, I'll give you the loom shot here. Nice green color there, pretty bright, uh, and a ton of loom on this. So if you're into looms, you're gonna fucking love the loom on this. The bezel is engraved with black paint. Um, minute ticks and lines up to the 15, and then a couple minute dots uh, throughout the rest here. It's a unidirectional bezel, meaning it only uh, turn one way. But I gotta tell you, turning this thing is, it's rough. It's a rough turn. You probably can't hear that, but boy, that is nasty. Um, if you ever had to actually use this for anything, you would be in big fucking trouble. Especially if you had gloves on or your hands were wet. I mean, just forget it. Um, that's pretty rough. The texture is almost like, uh, you know, gear teeth here, a little gap, and then a little more gear teeth, almost like uh, something you'd see on a bicycle. A little weird. Overall, I'm definitely not a fan of this bezel. It is just hard to turn. Um, I, I do like how it's in, you know, it's like recessed in the case, but they really should have made it easier to turn. I mean, this is like full fucking force here. So anyway. Back of the case, let's check it out. It's got the Seiko Tsunami logo. Um, it touts that 200 meter water resistance and it has the X of the prospect and it's just a standard screw on back. Nothing wrong with that. Now let's move on to the bracelet. This fucking bracelet is unbelievable. Um, Seiko is not known for their bracelet quality. I mean, let's just get that out of the way. If you're a Seiko fanboy, I don't know what to tell you. You know they're not fucking known for their bracelets. Uh, now, the guy who let me borrow this, he got it secondhand. And look, this is exactly what I mean. This thing is already, whoever fucking sized this first. Now, this uses a pin and collar system. And whoever sized this first really fucked it up. They must have overextended, uh, stretched out the collars. And it just, it just doesn't, it's just fucked up. That's, that's, that's the only fucking way I can say it. It almost felt like, when I started messing with this watch, it almost felt like that the bracelet was just disintegrating. And um, boy, it's just, it's just nasty. I don't know how else to fucking say it. It's just a nasty fucking bracelet. Um, anyways, you know what, I'm not even gonna fuck with it now. Um, whoever had this probably fucked it up. I, I assume it would not come like this uh, with these fucking pins pretty much just falling out. I mean, just in the time I've been handling the watch, you already have this one come off. And if I do a little shake here, a little shake there, I don't know if it's going to happen on camera. You know how these fucking things are. But um, yeah, sometimes it just kind of falls out. There's the part of that pin sticking out. Um, 
after doing a Google search, I found out I'm not the only person this has happened to with these pins. But again, I think that whoever sized the bracelet fucked it up because there's more links. The links would be even if this was brand new. And I think whoever had this just decided they were going to do it themselves and didn't know what the fuck they were doing. So, you know, anyways, back to the actual, you know, material, the bracelet. It's steel, solid steel. And this part here on the center, the center top bits. These are just one link solid and the center top bits are a little polished. Everything else is brushed to match the rest of the watch. Uh, usually I would say always get a watch on a bracelet, but on this watch after handling it, this has not been a great experience. So I'm just gonna put it that way. The clasp is secure. It's got a fold over here and then two push buttons to release. Um, not a lot of wiggle room, but a little wiggle. On to the wrist shots here. This is the watch on bracelet on my wrist. My wrist is seven inches in case anybody is curious of what it would look like. Where's a little big, but where's a little smaller than I thought being a almost 48 millimeter watch. And here it is on a NATO. This is another Alpha Shark from Blue Shark. And he chose the correct hardware for, brushed over polished for this watch. In conclusion, for me, it would be a strong pass. At a $500 price tag, brand new, with timekeeping like that, plus that nasty bracelet, the very hard to turn bezel, um, I just wouldn't get it. But also, in my personal opinion, I think it's a bit too bulky for my seven inch wrist. Um, I would just be whacking it on fucking everything. But maybe you're looking for something thicker, maybe the bezel doesn't bother you that much and maybe you really love the fucking design. So let me know what you thought of the watch. Let me know what you thought of the review. Give me a like. Think about subscribing if you're feeling extra generous and I will see you on another video.